Rachel. I'm the founder and CEO of Love Stories TV. I always like to know who I'm talking to, so can I get like a quick raise of hands if you're shooting wedding videos now, if you're in the wedding videography business already? Okay, okay, cool. What about you want to get into the wedding video business because maybe you're doing photo or, okay, great. And what about wedding photographers? Okay, great. So we've got some wedding videographers, some wedding photographers, and some people trying to move in. So I'm going to primarily talk about video. That's what I primarily talk about. But a lot of the tips and tricks for marketing yourself digitally, for marketing your wedding business, can actually be applied to photo. Um, and I'll try to save some time at the end for questions. We can talk about that. And Love Stories TV is going to be launching some exciting new products for photographers in the coming weeks. So if you are a photographer only, I encourage you to sort of pay attention. So today I'm going to talk about how to market your wedding videos. So I am the founder and CEO of Love Stories TV. Love Stories TV is the first and only video platform for wedding ideas and inspiration. So what does that mean? Wedding videographers from all over the world upload their professionally produced real wedding videos along with all the details about the wedding to lovestoriestv.com. Then brides and grooms can come to Love Stories TV to find ideas, inspiration, products, and services for their wedding by watching those data-enriched real wedding videos. So we're connecting wedding professionals with a pipeline of customers and engaged couples and their families with a pipeline of ideas, inspiration, products, and services. So as David said, wedding videos have come a really long way over the last, I don't know, it's been like seven or eight years since they've really like achieved this new style and quality. So I like to start by just showing a little bit of the types of videos that we have on Love Story TV in case you're not familiar with the medium in 2019. We are here to recognize your wedding and we are gathered as your friends and your family and the most important people in your lives. As we gather, we look out at this beautiful sight. Season after season after season, there are soaring peaks over 14,000 feet high. There are meadows of tranquility that burst with color and joy. There are deep raging torrents of water. Locations may change. Adventures will delight and challenge, but yours is a desire for a marriage that lasts a lifetime. So those videos are pretty amazing, right? That is just like a very small sampling of the thousands of wedding films that have been published on lovestorystv.com. And those aren't million dollar weddings and those aren't celebrity weddings. Those are regular weddings all over the world. As David referenced, the ease of cameras and the quality of the online platforms has made it such that you can produce something that looks like a feature film trailer for a totally regular wedding. So, First of all, let's start with why should you listen to me? I started a platform about wedding videos, but what do I know about marketing? So before founding Love Stories TV, I actually spent several years at Birchbox, which is a beauty subscription company, and I ran content there. So I produced a lot of videos, and I marketed that product to a community of women where we wanted to entertain them and also help them make purchase decisions. So over the years, I've acquired a lot of tips and tricks about how to create content, how to market that content, and how to use that content to get people to buy things, whether they're buying your videography services or whether they're watching your wedding video to decide on a wedding venue or make a wedding dress purchase decision. So as I mentioned, Love Story TV is the first and only wedding video platform. And these wedding videos, as you just saw in that trailer, are a really spectacular category of content. They're actually the only category of video content where you pair regular people with professional production. And they're really what I like to call the holy grail of the internet in 2019. They're short, they're high quality, they're emotive, and they're real. 
So the problem before Love Stories TV was that this highly compelling video content and the talented filmmakers who were creating it were only reaching small audiences. They were putting these videos on their own websites, they were sharing these videos on their own social channels, and they were putting them on Vimeo. So consumers don't use Vimeo. Women who are 18 to 35 are not hanging around on Vimeo when they get home from the bar at night or when they're at the sorority house trying to find entertaining content, right? And if you share something on Facebook, unless it goes totally viral because a bridesmaid falls down or the groom is very handsome and is hysterically crying, you're only gonna reach your own audience on Facebook. And with your website, unless you are an SEO you know, mastermind, you're really only reaching your customers who you send there. So wedding videographers weren't getting this incredible content in front of the audience that they should have been able to get in front of. So the solution is Love Stories TV. So we aggregate all this incredible video content and we encourage the videographers to add metadata so we can deliver it to an audience of millennial women and engaged couples who are looking to hire wedding videographers and other pros for their weddings. So Love Story TV is the only wedding video platform. We have almost 9,000 videos and we're growing by about 200 a week. We have 40,000 data points and those data points all represent venues, vendors, florists, caterers, dress designers, anything that you need for your wedding, you can find in the wedding videos tagged on Love Stories TV. We have 212 million monthly video views across our site and our social channels, and nine million monthly unique viewers across our site and social channels. So how does it work? Wedding videographers come to lovestoriestv.com and they upload their videos. And you can actually upload and host unlimited wedding videos for free. So sorry if anyone's here from Vimeo, but you can stop using Vimeo today if you're a wedding videographer. Once you've uploaded those videos, you can keep them private if you want. Rarely anybody using our platform does, but you can. You can keep them private, you can send them to your client, and you can just embed those videos on your website. This can be your new storage solution. But what the vast majority of our videographers do is they go on to add the data points to those videos, thus publishing them publicly on the site. So we ask you, what was the venue? Who were the other vendors who worked on the wedding? What did the dress wear? Uh, what was the style? What was the religion? What was the culture? And you might be saying, do I know those things about the wedding? But increasingly, wedding videographers and photographers are collecting that information. I'm gonna tell you a little bit later in the presentation why you wanna do that. Even if you never use Love Stories TV, it's gonna help you build your business. But the people who actively use Love Stories TV have learned to collect that information from their clients so they can publish it on the site because then they get discovered when someone comes to our site searching a particular venue, they find your videos. Or they're searching a particular florist, they find your videos. And then once all those videos get published, they live in channels. So a videographer has a channel where all their videos live, and a venue has a channel where all the videos uploaded by many different videographers from that venue also live. Does anyone in this room ever use hows to like plan a little home design, a little renovation? I like to tell people we're kind of like hows for weddings. So how do we help filmmakers? We help filmmakers generate leads. Every filmmaker that uploads to our site has a big contact button on their channel where people can email you and ask if you're available for their wedding and they can learn more about your business. And then they can book you. So we're helping people book weddings. We consistently hear that people have either booked the highest price wedding that they've ever booked or the first destination wedding that they've ever done or a wedding in a new style or in a new venue that they wanted to work at because Love Stories TV connected them with those customers. We help our community of filmmakers grow their social channels because we feature you on our social channels and tag you and promote your business. We grow your brand awareness in the same way and we're also elevating the entire industry. I'm on the stage right now at B&H. B&H is talking about video. It's because of Love Stories TV that video is reaching new audiences. We partner with The Knot, with Wedding Wire, with Brides Magazine, with Martha Stewart Magazine with, I can't think of all the places, our head of editorial sitting in the front row, she can probably think of more. We are trying to bring wedding video to the forefront in a place where it's kind of been below photography historically in the ecosystem. So let's talk a little bit about all these ways that we're helping people. Like I said with lead gen and bookings, everybody has a contact button on their site, every videographer. These are just like a small sampling of messages that we see come through your channels. People contacting you, not just saying, are you available on this date? But I just watched 10 of your wedding videos. I love your style. I love the way you brought this particular couple's love story to work. Are you available for my wedding? 
We're featuring all of these wedding videographers across our social channels, and we're always tagging you. And because of our partnerships and our larger social reach, we're reaching millions of people every month, which means you are too. The best thing that ever happens at Love Story TV is when someone tells us, I booked a wedding because of you, I booked a more expensive wedding because of you, I gained 10 Instagram followers yesterday because of you, or 100 or 1,000. We grow and we benefit when filmmakers benefit. We get press within the industry, as I mentioned, people are starting to pay attention to video in a different way because now there's a central hub and a central brand just talking about wedding video. So that's a little bit about Love Stories TV and me and why I think you should listen to me and trust me and think that I know what I'm talking about. So hopefully I've achieved that. And even if not, bear with me, maybe I'll say something interesting. And now I wanna go through and teach you some tips and tricks that will help you achieve success, not just on lovestoriestv.com, but in your business as a whole. And again, a lot of these can actually be applied to photography and I'll try to keep dropping that in. And if you have questions about that at the end, I'll share my contact information and we're really happy to talk about that. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is why you should start publishing on your social channels in vertical. Everybody hates me when I say this. No one, no one ever was like, oh, vertical, I wanna do that, that's easier. It's harder. You either have to shoot with vid vertical in mind or shoot with both types of uh, aspects in mind, which is more difficult. You have to cut a certain way. You're not gonna put vertical on your own website. Like, it adds work, but I promise you it's worth it. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that. So I wanna show, show you this screen share video just to like, oh, this isn't, is this a video? To give you an idea. Look at me, I'm just scrolling through my Instagram right now, right? Look at how a video looks when it's in vertical versus in horizontal. It's really just common sense. It takes up more of your phone screen. If you're scrolling on Facebook or Instagram and something takes up the whole screen, it's gonna grab your attention more. You're gonna stop and watch it. And if it's a teeny little vertical video, you're not gonna do that. It's really not that much more scientific than that. So, as I said, it's more work, but it's worth it. This is a little screenshot by some research that was done by Dash Hudson, which is the social media measurement tool that we use at Love Stories TV, and we used to use at Birchbox, and it's used by all kinds of big brands like Vanity Fair and Vivo and Revolve. And they actually studied this for photo and for video. Vertical performs better than square, which performs better than horizontal. You want to be doing this on Instagram and on Facebook. And you want to be doing it on your own channels. And I'll tell you that Caitlin, who's sitting right here, is more likely to feature your work on the Love Story TV channels if it's vertical. Because it makes our job easier and we know it's going to perform better. And a tip that I always tell for photographers and videographers is that you want to send a little teaser of content to your clients as fast as you can after the wedding, right? Because they're really excited. And for the videographers in the room, if you can turn around a 60 second Instagram video before she's gotten photos from her photographer, then your video is going to be the first thing that she's going to share and that everyone's going to see from the wedding. And she's going to remember that and you're going to get a whole lot of attention. So if you can do a vertical crop video, 60 seconds, 24 hours after the wedding and send that to your bride, she's gonna post it to Instagram immediately, all her friends are gonna share it. Another tip about that is you can upload those vertical crops to Instagram stories and to IGTV. IGTV really today mostly gets views because Instagram is pushing it out, but IG stories are incredibly popular and IG stories are easier to share. So if you share a vertical clip of a wedding video to your Instagram stories and you tag the bride, we're gonna talk about tagging in a second, she can instantly share that to her Instagram stories. And when you send her that vertical clip, you should also teach her about the repost app. You could send her the file, but be like, here is the easiest way for you to share this vertical video clip. And now suddenly you're on top of the photographer because you sent her content first. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is the cold open, okay? So let's watch two different clips of a wedding video. Is this playing? Let's see. There we go.
Karen. Okay, now I'm going to send you a second one. Okay. The first video I showed you is beautiful. That was probably an incredible, beautiful wedding. It has like sweeping views of a beach. There was like a monkey. It was incredible, right? But I showed you 20 seconds and nothing happened, okay? If you put that on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Love Stories, Love Stories if he's a little different, people are like researching their wedding. You put this on your own social channels, it's gonna be really hard to get anyone to wait more than 20 seconds to see what happens. That second clip I showed you opens on the face of a crying groom. We're gonna talk about this more later. Nothing performs better on the internet than crying grooms. We have tried it. <laughs> crying moms, they do okay. Crying brides, nobody pays any attention. Crying dads, they're up there. A crying groom will be the best content you will ever post. Literally, we have YouTube videos with millions of views because the title is like, watch this groom cry. And he's like very handsome and he's crying and this is just the world that we live in. So. Do a cold open. Open to the best part of the wedding video. If you don't have a crying groom, that's okay. Try to find a crying dad. Try to find a crying mom. Find a funny speech. Here's what's in every wedding, even if you can't get a groom to tears. The bridesmaid reveal of the brides in her dress. I promise you bridesmaids will cry and squeal and be like, OMG, you look so beautiful. No one's ever looked as beautiful as you. I've been that bridesmaid. It happens at 100% of weddings. Find the best moment in the wedding video. Cold open to that moment. Let that moment play out and then you can go chronological. Your bride and her immediate family are gonna love your video no matter what, okay? You could probably put half as much work as you put into your videos and your bride is still gonna love it. It's her wedding. But if you wanna make that video work for you and get the rest of the internet to love it, you gotta start with the best moment in the video. That's what we talk about with the cold open. Um, and I think that, you know, the point of this is you should do it on your own Instagram, your own Facebook, on Love Stories TV, on YouTube, and do it in vertical and like you'll just break the internet. Okay, let's go on to our next thing. So now I wanna talk about tagging. And this is like where we're gonna get into sort of the nitty gritty of Instagram. So I'm gonna show you two examples. And I did these as like screen share videos because I thought it was easier. So these are videos that are actually on the videographer's posts. And these are all videos. So Videographers now tag their videos with hashtag love stories TV, which is like the equivalent of like hashtag wedding video, and it helps their peers find their videos, it helps other bride find their videos, it's like contextually relevant. So I actually went to that hashtag to find all these videos. So let's start with this first one. This is actually posted by a videographer that I know really well, real special. And so what they did, as you'll see, is they tagged in the photo itself as many vendors and designers as they could, including Panina Tournay, who is a quite famous dress designer. She's exclusive to Kleinfeld. She has a big following. She's like on Say Yes to the Dress. She's like a celebrity. By tagging her in the video, they got that notification and they came and commented on this Instagram post. Something people don't always understand about Instagram and the way that commenting and hashtagging works is yes, someone can literally click on a hashtag. And yes, someone can literally read through your comments, but Instagram uses those as signals. If Panina Tournay, who has over half a million followers, I think she has like 600,000 followers, comments on your post, that sends a signal to Instagram saying, this person's post is high quality. People who like Panina Tournay are probably gonna like this. And that gets you into the Discover feed and it helps you perform well in people's Instagram algorithms. Because as you know, you don't see all the posts from all the people you follow. Instagram every day is trying to decide what does Rachel want to see on Instagram? If Rachel seems to be liking over and over wedding videos, we think she likes stuff about weddings. So we're gonna take out of the thousands of people she follows, the people whose content about weddings and bump it to the top, okay? So it's these little signals. So when you're publishing your content, this goes for photographers too, tag everyone you can in the video, tag them in the comments, hashtag them if their name is big, like a Pernina Tournay, and then you're giving yourself the opportunity for them to come like, comment, and share. And if they do, then you're signaling to Instagram that you have really high quality content. So here's another example. This one is a little bit of what I would call a missed opportunity. And by the way, I just wanna preface by saying, all of these filmmakers are filmmakers that we work with that I think are so talented and they're doing everything, you know, mostly right. It's just like my job to nitpick and help people do better. So don't be offended. Okay, 
let's go to the next um, slide. Okay, so let's play this video. So this is actually a wedding video post on a venue's uh, Instagram. And if you read the comment, they said, we just happened to find this amazing video from our venue. So when I saw that, I was like, why would they ever just happen to find it? Why didn't the videographer send it to them, tag them, hashtag them, comment them, DM it to them, right? Like, you should be giving yourself the opportunity to get shared everywhere. So then I went back to the videographer's original post of that wedding, and I noticed that he didn't tag that particular vendor. So it's exactly right. That venue just happened upon it. So I want to talk about what this person should have done differently. So what you want to do when you hire a client, whether you're a photographer or a videographer, the first thing you should do after they send you a check is you should send them a questionnaire. And you should say, please tell me every vendor that's working on your wedding. And if you are comfortable enough, you should ask, can you give me their Instagram handle or their website? If not, you can find them from their business name. Tell me everyone who's working on the wedding and everything that you're wearing and tell them the truth. Be like, I want to know who the vendors are so I can research them ahead of time. It will help me do my job on the day. And I want to know the designers because I want to get your work featured if I can. And I want those designers to take notice, not your work, your wedding. I want these designers to take notice of your wedding. And so I want to use that when I publish it on my website, on my Instagram, on my Facebook, on my YouTube, and when I submit it to Love Stories TV. This is a great way to get SEO traffic is if you publish every wedding that you do to your website and you tag all those vendors and designers, then when someone goes searching for them, they might find your website. And that's the same way the Love Story TV platform works. So this filmmaker missed an opportunity. Well, he got lucky that the venue saw it. But what I'm saying is he could have missed an opportunity of that venue not sharing that post. So here's like the checklist that you want to go through. First, get from your brides all the people working on the wedding and all the designers. When you post the videos to your Facebook and to your Instagram, let's talk about Instagram tag in the actual video. This is a relatively new feature. Just like you can tag in a photo, you can tag in the video. Tag every vendor and designer. Then at mention them in the comments. What I would do is also then take that post and private message it to all those people and be like, hey guys, it was awesome to work with you last Saturday or seven Saturdays ago. I don't know however fast you work. Here's a video featuring your work that you can share on your Instagram. Let me know if you want me to like teach you how to use repost app or send you the file. Now you just got 20 people to market your work for you and you're doing them a favor because you just sent them a gorgeous video that showcases their venue, their flowers, their catering. You can do the same thing on Facebook, same thing on your website, and now you have all the data so when you upload the video to Love Stories TV, you are gonna perform super well on our platform because you have tons of data. Okay. This is a, actually a list of all the stuff that I just said by memory, if you want to take a screenshot of it. <laughs> okay. The last piece is emotional wow moments. So this is sort of like the cold open, but my point is thinking about what are those best moments in a video, right? So these are things that are going to help you get featured on Love Stories TV. People ask us a lot, how do I get featured on Love Stories TV? I know I can upload all my videos. I know I can publish all my videos. I know if I tag all the vendors and designers, I'm likely to get found in search. But I want to get on your Instagram, Rachel. I want to get on your Facebook. I want to get on your YouTube. So I'm going to tell you the things that we look for when we feature people. But you should also be thinking about this for your own channels. So one is emotional wow moments. These are all of our top performing videos on our YouTube channel. I think there's a crying groom in like all but two of them. And I think one is a father who cries. One is just a really beautiful Oregon lesbian wedding. So sometimes you don't need a crying man, but it does really help. Um, so emotional wow moment. So upload your videos to Love Stories TV, and then you're going to send an email to features at Love Stories and be like, Hey, Love Story TV team, I just uploaded 10 videos. One of them cold opens to this really sweet crying groom. I think it would be a great fit for your Instagram. You just did us a favor. Even though one of our interns is going to go watch every video on Love Stories to try to find which ones to feature, you told us already about something we wanted to feature. And since you happen to know that that's a great moment, put a mini clip of that on Instagram and on Facebook and on your own YouTube. The next are vendors and designers. So we want to feature videos that we know all the details about so we can tell the stories. 
and we also partner with other vendors and other designers. So the way Love Stories TV works is it's totally free for videographers, okay? You can upload, store, host all your content for free. The people who pay Love Stories TV are the dress designers and the other vendors because they want to use your videos to market their work, which is great for you because now more people are viewing your videos and hiring you. So when we work with a dress designer, when they pay us to promote their brand, the way we do that is by sharing your wedding videos that feature that dress designer, which is what you want. If someone's buying a Beholden dress, they're also booking a videographer. This is the win-win three-sided platform. So when Beholden comes and says, okay, Love Story TV, I'm gonna become a paying subscriber of yours, then we go look through all our Beholden videos and decide which ones to feature. And we always tag the filmmaker, and we always credit the filmmaker, and we always have a contact button for the filmmaker, but now you're getting more views, especially if Beholden shares it. But if your bride wore Beholden and we didn't know that, then you miss out on that opportunity. You also miss out on getting discovered on the platform by brides searching, but we can't feature your videos if we don't know enough about the wedding. So details are really important. And again, you should be having that information for your own channels. It's gonna help you succeed. The next is unique venue style or culture. So something that makes Love Stories TV a little bit different than like editorial outlets of the past in weddings is we're not featuring one kind of wedding. Martha Stewart Weddings features Martha Stewart Weddings, and that's fine. I love a Martha Stewart wedding, but not everybody can afford to have a Martha Stewart wedding, and not everybody's lifestyle and culture uh, fits into what a Martha Stewart wedding is. Brides Magazine features million dollar weddings, and that's fine, they're Condé Nast, they're a sister program to Vogue. I love those weddings, but not most people are having a million dollar wedding. Style Me Pretty, which is an incredible wedding platform. It changed the way people research their wedding but they're choosing weddings that fit in an editorial perspective of that blog. That's not Love Story TV. We're trying to feature all the weddings. We want to feature weddings that are unique, that feature cultures that are less represented, that feature sizes, shapes, sexual orientations of couples that are less represented. That's really important to us. It also performs really well in 2019 because people don't just want to see one type of person. So if you can upload interesting, different weddings to Love Stories TV, you have a better chance of getting featured. And again, email those to features at and let us know that you uploaded something cool, interesting, different. So the three examples that I pulled out here is just a gorgeous, multicultural, Indian, South Asian wedding that just doesn't look like every single other wedding. Another one was a couple who actually got married at the house that's featured in the Notebook movie. I just watched on a flight recently and like cried in the middle seat and everyone thought I was insane. Um, and the next one was like at a llama farm. So those are easy stories to tell. They're different, they're interesting, and that's really important to us. The next thing is the love story. So you could have a wedding that like visually is just really beautiful and there's nothing that like jumps out at you about the video, but then when you read the description below, it's like this couple met like as missionaries in Lebanon, or this couple got married at the same church where their grandparents got married 50 years ago on the same day, or this bride's mother like stitch her dress together. Or what are the examples I have up here? Someone had a bad date that turned into uh, a marriage. And this is also like a New York like love story that felt like it was out of a movie. So it's not just the designers and the details, but if you tell us when you submit the video in the description how the couple met and what makes their story interesting, that's an easy story for us to tell. And again, you should be saying that on your Instagram, on your Facebook, on your website, because people are following you too. You're a little marketer, you're a little publisher, like you need all of that stuff. So to recap, how to get featured on Love Stories TV. Find some crying grooms. <laughs> uh, make sure that you have all the information about the vendors, the designers, and the style. Share with us your unique weddings, your interesting weddings, uh, your weddings that aren't you know, typical of everything you see every day, and love stories that are interesting and different. So again, to recap, you want to upload all your weddings to love stories because people might be searching that vendor. They might be researching you as a videographer, searching that florist. But the ones that are extra special, we want you to let us know. So to recap, Love Stories TV is the first and only platform for wedding videographers and for wedding ideas and inspiration. You can upload, host, store, and display unlimited wedding and proposal and engagement, anything related to a wedding video for free. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna tag all the vendors, you wanna go vertical when you're on social, and you wanna start with a cold open. And once you've uploaded all your videos to us, if you wanna get featured on our channels, uh, go ahead and email features at lovestoriestv.com so you can notify us about your best content. Um, and like I said, make sure you're following along if you're a photographer because we have some interesting things launching soon. 
for photo. I don't know if I have time for questions, you tell me. So find me later. Uh, and this is my contact information if you have any questions. Thank you.